And for this video, we'll be taking a look at Juno Eclipse for the 30th Anniversary Collection, based upon her appearance from the Force Unleashed. So she's probably, as far as the Force Unleashed action figures are concerned, she's probably the easiest one to get a hold of. Uh, and oftentimes you can find her even at a local comic, bo comic book sh uh, store, even to this day. And even if you do find her, oftentimes you can find her brand new for like $20. Uh, and I recall back in 2008, she was very easy to find at retail. Um, unfortunately, I did not get her at the time. I actually didn't get her until the same time as like Maris and uh, Coda. But I do recall seeing her at stores at the time. And, you know, she's just one of those action figures. I was like, yeah, I don't need her today. And then time goes by. And then after a while, I'm like, why do I have her in my collection yet? Um, I actually think I got the other Juno Eclipse that was released later on in the battle pack first before this one which is interesting um, both are great action figures and I'll show her here alongside this Juno here in a minute uh, so what can I say about Juno clips kind of an interesting character as well she's uh, the pilot of the rogue shadow follows Vader's apprentice around all his missions and she does show up in the force unleashed 2 uh, by that point she's pretty much left the Empire behind and became a rebel and uh, another character that I think she deserves a little bit more of a story than what we got. Uh, Beyond the Force Unleashed 2, of course we know how that game ended. Kind of on a cliffhanger. And we don't really know what her story is after that. As far as I know, we don't really know what her story is after that. Uh, I don't think she showed up in any other novels or books or anything outside the Force Unleashed games. And then the Force Unleashed book as well. So, unfortunately, she doesn't really have a fate. We don't know what happened to her. Who knows? Uh, these days, with Disney in charge, maybe it's for the best. But it would be nice if uh, some fans had creative freedom where they could write books about some of these characters. But as far as I can tell, we'll probably never know. So let's just go ahead and dive into this figure here. So, not a whole lot of uniqueness about her. She's just reutilizing, or maybe she's not necessarily reutilizing, but this uh, female officer's body has been utilized a lot. Uh, Yasan Azard, who I reviewed, I have reviewed on the channel, she's utilizing the same exact body. Uh, the custom Nancy Dalla have utilizes it, and I think there might be a few others as well. Maybe Dina Sean has the same body, uh, the one that. Dina Sean's in her Imperial outfit. I think either Juno or maybe that Dina Sean were the first ones to re really utilize the sculpt. So pretty good head sculpt for Juno. You can tell it's Juno Eclipse. She has a rank badge there, which I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. Hasbro has never really done a good job with their rank badges. Even for the newly updated Imperial Officers uniform, they didn't really get the rank badges accurate there either. And as you can see, she's uh, kind of a scrawny... Maybe not necessarily a scrawny character, but the tooling for her is kind of scrawny. Very thin. And she's pretty much cast in black and a little bit of silver, and that's pretty much it. So you can't take her cap off. It sits on her head pretty good. And in terms of articulation, she does have a ball joint the head. And hinged shoulders, and hinged elbows, and then swivel wrist, uh, swivel waist, and then swivel hips, and then hinged knees and hinged ankles as well. In terms of weapons and accessories, just the standard E11, nothing unique about that. Then of course her signature stand, the 
eclipse this June eclipse expanding universe and she does fit on her stand pretty good uh, something interesting as well so sometimes Hasbro they'll put the hole in the foot up towards the toe and you would think there wouldn't be a lot of room to put a stand on characters that have that but it seems to be the case for Juno but then sometimes Hasbro will put the hole up towards the heel where you think they would have a lot of room to work with and it doesn't work out so it, very inconsistent and when sometimes I've heard people every now and then say no if the holes towards the toe there it's not going to work out very well well here's an example of an action figure where it does uh, here's her glove here As you see her hand I still have the elastic band around this looks like it's starting to show its age and might start breaking apart here soon So as I mentioned, there is two Juno Eclipse action figures, and this 30th anniversary one, I would say is probably the more conservative one. Uh, the second one is pretty much utilizing the same exact mold, minus a couple differences. Uh, just have her stand on her own. And it's this one here. It's one where she has her shirt open. Uh, as, as far as I could tell, it's pretty much all the same exact action figure other than maybe a retool for her torso there. And it's a great action figure as well. Uh, I think the paint is actually a little bit more crisp in her face on the 30th anniversary figure over this one. Uh, this one here, she's released as part of the Force Unleashed packs. I forget which one she came with specifically. I have to look it up again. It was either the Mandalorian Star Killer or the uh, Raxus Prime one. And those packs, regardless whichever one it was, uh, incredible packs. Great figures all around. And I'll be sure to review those here pretty soon as well. I think that's pretty much all I can tell you about Juno. I mean, it's pretty basic action figure. Eh. For whatever reason, this one, the stand won't fit on her too well. And I usually have her displayed with Starkiller where she's propped up against him. Let's see if she stands there. Uh, eh, I guess she won't. I have an idea though. See if we can do this. Uh, so, would I recommend Juno for your collection? I would. Like I said, she's probably the more affordable and easily accessible Force Unleashed action figure, if not the most. And you could probably find her no problem on eBay for like $20 in free shipping, no matter where you're at in the world. Uh, like I said, you might be able to find her in a comic book shop every now and then. I have seen her and I've heard of other people finding her no problem. So if you really want Juno for your collection and you don't have her yet, by all means, I would say jump on her now and you'll probably find her for a good deal. Uh, would Juno make for a great Black Series action figure? I think she would. Now that we have the female Imperial Officer's mold with the uh, Tala action figure I think now would be a good time to jump on Juno Eclipse as well all they have to do is make a new head and that's pretty much it really so I think a lot of people would be happy with having a Juno for the Black Series either version but yeah 
that's all I can say. So that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more in the future. There will always be lots more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. I appreciate your support. And check out some of the links in the description as well. Thanks for watching.